Hey everybody and welcome to today's video in which we are going to try to explain how one of the more interesting plugins for um, 3ds Max works and that is a plugin from i2 software for us Mac Pro. Now before I start explaining anything else uh, I want to clarify one thing. What is Forest Back Pro? Well, Forest Back Pro is a plugin you can download from i2 Software, which is basically a scattering plugin. So what does it mean? It means basically that if you have a plane or you have some surface on which you need to have a plethora or multiple objects being scattered all across it, you need to have a certain plugin which in this case would be Forest Pack Pro, but maybe if you're more comfortable using Multiscatter, be my guest, use that one as well, because that's a pretty good uh, plugin as well. But like I said in the beginning, we are going to try and explain the basics of Forest Pack Pro in this video. Now, for this, as you can see, I basically have three forms over here. I have a simple well, an extruded box with a uh, number of polygons, then we have a bit of a modified uh, form over here, and we have another one that's bent over here. So these are, will be used later on in the lesson. So for now, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to hold on control, right click, and from here choose a plane, because I will need something on which I am going to scatter all of my objects. So for now, I'm going to leave it up like this. I'm going to move it down to 0, 0, 0. I'm going to select everything that's in here and move these guys to the side so they're not in the way. All right, so if, once we have this, we are pretty much set up for starting to work with i2 softwares for SPAC Pro. So let's begin. The first thing that we want to do is click on Forest Pack Pro. As soon as we click it, it's going to start. Uh, it's going to be, uh, become blue, and it's going to require us to select either a plane, or I mean, uh, any geomet geometrical uh, piece, or a spline. In this case, first of all, we're going to click on this uh, here plane. So as soon as I click on it, you're going to notice that we you're going to get these uh, bigger planes in our scene. So I'm going to right click and then go into the move or the modify tab. Once we are here, you're going to notice that we have a bunch of options over here. Uh, now I've collapsed all of these uh, options, all of these menus because they are filled with options that are really interesting but it kind of takes some time before you start understanding what is what. So Let's start from the beginning. Now, like I explained previously, this or Forest Pack Pro is a scattering plugin. So it basically needs to have two things. It needs to have a surface on which, or a spline on which it will scatter certain objects. And then it needs to have a defined which objects it's going to scatter. By default, we have these planes that you see here. So let's go ahead and start uh, going a bit deeper into these, uh, well, these menus. First of all, I'm going to open up my geometry tab. So as soon as I open up this tab, you're going to notice I have uh, some options that I can change here. Now we're going to start with the most simple, and that is the template. By default, whenever you create a new Forest Pack Pro, the template for this is going to be one plane. You can click here and you can change it. You can have two planes, which will make it so it's uh, cross. You can have three planes, you can have four planes. And pretty much, uh, if you've ever played any of the older RPGs like WoW or some other game like that, you've probably noticed that uh, once you start looking at the trees, they kind of look okay. But if you take a look at them from uh, high up, 
you probably have noticed that they are actually just planes intersecting with each other. So you can have that happening in your scene. So all you gotta do is change it to four planes. Uh, then you can have different options. You can have curved plane, low animated plane, medium, high animated plane, or you can have a sample 3D tree. So for now, I'm gonna go back to well, let's keep it up to three planes and see what else we can change. So the next thing that I want to do here is I'm not going to uh, add anything else. So for now, I'm just going to keep it like this. So the only thing that I've changed here is the template from one plane to three planes. Now, the, the next thing that I want to uh, explain would probably be the distribution so we defined where we want to distribute these uh, planes with uh, we defined what the objects for the distribution are going to be the next thing we need to do is control the distribution map so once you click on the distribution map the first thing that you're going to notice is that here you're going to have this map it's going to be black and white Underneath, you have, uh, if you click, you're gonna have a plethora of options. So, depending on which one you choose, you're gonna get different results. So, this is the spread one, spread two, spread three. If you go lower, you're gonna get down to dense. If you get lower, you have full. So, when it's full, you're gonna notice that all of these. Uh, well, all of these planes are intersecting with each other. So for now, I'm going to go and leave this to dense. So now the next thing that we want to do here is control the density of all of these meshes. The way to do it is if you go over here where it says density, you have uh, grayed out pixels which is basically grayed out because the aspect ratio has been locked up and you have this units by default this is the size uh, the size is set at 10,000 so for example if I get this to 20,000 and press enter you're gonna notice that all of those extra planes were removed but at the same time if I remove this to 5,000 you're gonna notice that we have a lot more planes now in our scene. So this field over here directly controls how many instances of the same polygon are going to be in our scene. All right, so I actually had a bit of a crush in 3ds Max, one of the many bugs. But still, we're back to where we were before Max decided to crash. So let's continue. So by default, we have uh, this geometry over here. So now let's go ahead and change this. I don't want to uh, continue using these three planes. Instead, I want to have custom geometry or custom elements that I can use to scatter around my surface. To do this, I have to come over to geometry and now instead of using a template, I'm going to click on custom object, come over to none, click and then select one of my geometries over here. I'm going to choose it box number one. The first thing you're going to notice is that now my plane is populated with more of these uh, planes or more of these uh, objects that are basically copies from this box. All right. So what we can do here is go ahead and add a few more geometry elements in the mix. To do this, it's very easy. All you gotta do is go over to geometry, press on this plus over here. It says add new item. As soon as you click it, by default it's gonna go back to template and you'll notice that we have all of these uh, big planes. But again, we want to use the custom object, none, and click on the second one. You can see here, now we have uh, box 001 and box 002. And if you take a look at our plane, we have both of these elements present in our scene. So let's go ahead and do one more addition with the add new item. Again, custom map, none, and click on the third one. 
So with this, now our scene is starting to look a bit different. Namely, we can see that in our scene, we have three of those geometries. All right, so I'm gonna go down to distribution map, and again, from 5,000, let's change it to 1,000, and see how that thing works for us. Now, by default, you're gonna notice one thing. Sometimes, uh, Forest Pack Pro likes to put all of the geometry that you, you see here in the form of a proxy object. In this case, it's putting it off as planes. But the thing is that if you go over here and render the current frame like this, you'll notice that all of these are actually geometry. So all of this uh, all of these planes are actual geometry that is being scattered all across. But let's increase this even further. So instead of 1000, let's try 300, which should give us a much more denser geometry like this. And now if I go a bit closer and re-render, you're going to notice that we have much a much more different end result. Namely, we have much more densely packed geometry. So that's a very good idea. That should give you a very good idea as to how you can add extra geometry over a certain uh, plane or a certain uh, geometry and how you can control it with the help of the density map. Now here's the thing, when you're using uh, the scattering tool like this, and it's going to place all of these uh, planes as placeholders, but in reality, when you actually go ahead and render something, you're going to get a much more different result, as you can see all the geometry in here. So now, we are looking at planes, but if we can take a look at how the geometry is going to look in our viewport, it can be very much helpful to us. So the way to do this is uh, quite easy. All you gotta do is go to, down to display and over here you have viewport display options. Now, for some reason for me, it's been set up as an adaptive, but if you click on mesh, it's going to take all of that geometry and it's going to show it up as a mesh. And this is basically going to give you a much more detailed look as to how your end result is going to look like when you render. But now, let's see one more thing that I wanna explain before we depart from this, or from this very introductory video to Forest Pack Pro. Now, the thing I want to explain here is that when you take a look at all of these uh, elements, like here, you're gonna notice one thing. If we render, all of them have exactly the same length. So exactly the same form, which kind of breaks the illusion that this can be some kind of a, well, some kind of an organic form. So, don't threat, don't be, don't be worried, because the, the people that made the plugin actually thought about that as well. So that's where the transform toolbar comes into play. So when you click on the transform toolbar, you're gonna notice uh, all of these options. But basically, this is broken down to three major pieces. This is the translation, which is basically moving it up to the uh, up or to the side by a certain amount. So if I enable this, what you're gonna notice is that all of the elements over here are gonna move. Some are gonna go left, some are gonna go front, to the right, etc. Now the second one is rotation. If I enable this, you're gonna notice that all of them are actually now rotated to a certain degree. Now that degree is controlled over here. So you basically have on the x-axis 
all of these are randomly moved for a certain value between minus 5 and plus 5. So for example, if I put minus 25 and enter, we're going to get more of a twist on the x-axis to 25 over here. And as you can see now, all of these are starting to get a certain degree of, well, a certain random degree of rotation. And now the third one is the scale. Now the scale is basically going to allow you to have this all cluster of geometry be different uh, from each other by a scale. So here you have a minimum of 80 to 120. So if I put this to 20 and put the maximum to let's say 150, this is going to make it so that some of these elements are taking the original form but only at 20% of the height while others are growing more than the initial form so up to 150% so now this is actually a very nice thing to know because the transform is where your mesh or your meshes that you've put in into Forest Pack Pro come into play and it's giving it that random look. So for here, if we take a, another render, we're gonna notice that we no longer have that uniform distribution of same geometry. All right, so pretty much I don't want to go any deeper than what we covered here because I still want to keep this very very simple all you got to do is uh, or all you have to take from this video is the following you need to understand that when you adding uh, geometry into your scene you have to choose either a plane or a spline once you choose what is the thing that you want to spread, you need to go over to geometry and from here choose the geometry that you want to scatter. And then once you're done with that, you go over back to distribution map and control how densely populated your scene is going to be with the elements that you choose to have scattered on your scene. And last but not least, if you want to add some randomness to your scene and give it a more believable organic look, you go down to the transform um, field and enable the transform, the rotation, and the scale. And I hope you guys had fun and you managed to learn something new in this video. If you have any questions, leave them below and I'll meet you in the comment section of the video. If you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button and if you're not subscribed now is a great time to do so as always thank you very much for watching the video and i will see you all in the next one